Bears are famous for their ability to hibernate. Wrapped in the security of a den, a hibernating bear fasts without eating, drinking, or even urinating or defecating. All the while, remarkably, the hibernating bear maintains the health of its organs, muscles, and bones. But hibernation is not a universal experience for bears. Polar bears demonstrate that there is no one-size-fits-all model for winter survival in the bear world. This is Mike Fitz, your resident naturalist with Explore.org, the world's largest live nature cam network. I'm joined by Elisa McCall, the Director of Conservation Outreach and a staff scientist for Polar Bears International, a nonprofit organization dedicated to conserving polar bears in the wild in the sea ice they depend on. Elisa is here to, to, to discuss the blend of traits and behaviors that polar bears utilize to survive winter. Elisa, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks, Mike, for having me. I'm looking forward to um, you sharing your expertise uh, with me about, uh, you know, polar bears in the winter and uh, how their ecology and their hibernation physiology may differ from brown bears, which I'm more familiar with. Uh, you know, with an important exception that we'll talk about um, in just a few moments, uh, polar bears are active year round. Uh, so what's the motivation for them to stay active in winter versus like a brown or black bear that right now, uh, like a black bear in my forest behind me is um, is tucked safely in its den. Well, in a lot of ways, polar bears are the polar opposites of black and brown bears when it when it comes to foraging. They are looking for food in the winter. So the winter is really the big time of year where polar bears are finding their food. They're hunting seals out on the sea ice, which of course forms in the winter, and it's their smorgasbord time of year. So they don't want to sleep through that. And while most polar bears remain active all year, a subset will not. So who are the polar bears that use dens and why are they doing so? The only polar bears that really use dens are the pregnant females. And they're going into their dens to give birth to their cubs over the winter. And they will go into their dens in about the late fall and come out in the spring, just in time to still get some good feeding in uh, before the summer. And can you be a bit more specific about maybe the timing mm -hmm. of they go of when they go into their dens? Uh, so when does that happen, and what might their their bodies experience, you know, during that time when they're in their dens? Yeah, absolutely. So polar bears do live across the circumpolar Arctic, so it will vary a little bit when they go into their dens, depending on where they live and what type of substrate they're digging their dens into. So many polar bears dig into uh, coastal snow areas. Some in Greenland dig into icebergs and some around Hudson Bay, for example, actually dig into the earth, into the peat. Uh, and have like earth dens that then get covered in snow. And generally they'll go into their dens around late October, early November, and they're gonna really hunker down and just rest for a while. They are conserving their energy as much as possible and their core body temperature will drop to a certain extent. They are giving birth approximately late November to mid-December. There's quite a range depending on where we look. A scientists assign all polar bears a birthday of January 1st, just to make it easier for us. And then after the mother gives birth, they're still, the family's still being very chill, still conserving energy. She's nursing her cubs, which takes a ton of energy and her body fat to do so. And her cubs are getting uh, bigger and they're getting used to their legs. And when they're ready to walk a little bit more and they're a little bit stronger in about late February, March, sometimes even a little later, depending on where they are, uh, then the mom will burst out of the den. Usually they hang out at the den for a few days, again, to get the cubs used to you know, being polar bears and using their legs. And then they'll go out and they'll look to hunt seals as soon as possible. And depending again on where they are in the Arctic, uh, in Hudson Bay, they might have to walk 100 kilometers to the sea ice. But in a lot of areas in the Arctic, they might be right there. They might be right on the edge of the sea ice and they'll go out and look for seals right away. And brown and black bears are able to maintain their, their bone, organ, and muscle health during their hibernation cycle. So do, do denning polar bears have this ability? And if so, can you elaborate a little bit on, on those mechanisms? Yeah, I, I can elaborate a little bit. I, I think that maybe brown and black bears hibernation is studied a little bit better than pregnant female polar bears just because of the sensitivities around denning mothers. But we know a little bit 
Uh, one cool thing about polar bears is, of course, they are a fat eating bear and they're one of the biggest, they are the biggest bear on earth and body fat is the name of the game for them. So when mother polar bears go into their dens, they have an incredible amount of body fat to be able to sustain them for up to an eight month fast while they're nursing their cubs and expending a lot of energy. So their body uh, eats its own fat, of course, while they're in their den. And this helps prevent um, muscle loss and bone loss. And they're metabolizing their own fat for water so they don't need to drink. Uh, so they are able to stay pretty darn healthy in there. We do see a little bit of muscle atrophy, but that muscle atrophy oh. is comparable to other bears that have gone through a period of um, less activity. So muscle degrades when we're not moving and we're not using it. And it can also degrade when your body needs it for energy. And so what the loss we see in pregnant females is similar to the loss we see in polar bears who in the summer aren't as active and not eating as much. So it's very similar. So in that way, pregnant female polar bears, even though they're going eight months without eating in a lot of cases, uh, they are you know, keeping a lot of their muscle mass, which is a really great evolutionary trait to have. And we're seeing that the ice-free season in the Arctic is, is expanding over the last several decades, and it's going to continue to expand as global temperatures rise. So do polar bears utilize any of these hibernation-like adaptations to survive you know, the ice-free period in late summer and fall? You know, for example, can they adjust their metabolism uh, to, to deal with a scarcity of food? You know, we used to think they could. We kind of just assumed that this is what was going on. Again, they do go through a period of less activity uh, in the places that we monitor during the summer. And we kind of thought this must mean their metabolism ramps down a little bit. But recent research has shown that actually they're not adjusting their metabolism. Uh, they are conserving energy by, again, moving less. But uh, what we're seeing, the, the weight loss that we see is just what you would expect from your average metabolism that you have anytime. So polar bears lose, you know, up to a kilogram of body weight a day when they're on land not eating. That's what we see in Western Hudson Bay. And if they had a, a metabolic function that would kind of get them into a semi-hibernation state or what we used to call walking hibernation, we would expect they wouldn't lose this much weight. So unfortunately, it doesn't seem that polar bears really can adjust their bodies and their metabolism for these longer ice-free periods. And to bring this back to uh, mother polar bears in particular, those that will utilize dens, uh, how is a warming climate affecting them? You know, many of these, you mentioned some of these mother bears have to fast for eight months at a time. So how is uh, the lack of sea ice um, affecting maybe their, their ability to reproduce and care for their cubs? Yeah, you know, mothers and cubs are really the most vulnerable polar bears in the population. Uh, from the very start, it's just harder for females to maintain a pregnancy if they're not able to get fat enough. And they get fat enough when they have a lot of ice and a lot of access to seals. So in years where we've seen less sea ice and less access, we see female polar bears not be as productive. Uh, in Hudson Bay, the last three years have been very good for sea ice. And as a result, we saw a mother with triplet cubs this year, which we haven't seen for ages. But again, in years where the sea ice isn't as good, we don't see as many cubs. Mother polar bears need so much body fat, again, to survive these long fasts while they're nursing and taking care of their cubs. They really need to get to a certain level of fat before they can be successful. And we're, we're seeing that become harder for them. So as a result, we are seeing in many areas fewer cubs, smaller cubs, and a major impact we've also seen kind of bigger picture is in certain areas, again, lack of access to denning regions that are or were the preferred areas. So for example, in the Beaufort Sea, about two thirds of the polar bears there used to actually den out on the sea ice. But as the sea ice retreated farther and farther um, offshore and there's moving around a lot more, it became less ideal denning habitat because it was less stable. So now only about a third of the polar bears den on the ice, whereas two thirds are now denning on land. And in Norway, for example, uh, there's Hopen Island, which was a very famous, very productive denning habitat for pregnant polar bears. It was just, you know, this haven of polar bear pregnancies. It was amazing. And polar bears don't have access to it anymore. The sea ice is no longer building up to to that island in time. So females can't even get there to make dens. So now there's no more denning on there just a few decades later. So 
this access to dens is a major issue. And in Hudson Bay, uh, because there's the permafrost and the peat dens, we are worried. And we've seen a little bit of uh, these dens collapse as the permafrost thaws. And we're also concerned even about increased wildfires. Who would think increased wildfires affect polar bear denning? But in some areas right. of the world, it does. So yeah, all these changes are affecting mothers and cubs. And that's why we, you know, we're concerned with protecting uh, the families, especially for polar bears. Well, it's it's amazing and incredible, really, to think about polar bears as like the winter bear. I mean, some of these yeah. some of these bears in the past, especially, may have lived their whole lives on sea ice, born in a den in the ice under the yeah. you know some snow cover, and and then if they're a male bear coming out and maybe never going into a den again. Uh, so you know, quite uh, incredible uh, animals. And this has been a, a fascinating conversation, Elisa. Uh, polar bears to me really demonstrate that winter needn't be a time to avoid the weather as long as you're adapted and capable of finding food. Uh, but polar bears haven't completely shed their need to den. You know, secure denning sites are essential for female bears to give birth and protect their newborn cubs. And during that time, polar bear moms, you know, stay healthy by utilizing some of the, uh, you know, same metabolic and physiologic adaptations that allow the brown and black bear cousins to hibernate through winter. Um, so I'd like to thank you uh, again, Lisa, for taking the time to join uh, me today and uh, sharing your expertise about polar bears in winter. Thanks, Mike. I always love talking about polar bears, especially moms and cubs. So I appreciate the chat today. And my guest today has been Elisa McCall, the Director of Conservation Outreach and a staff scientist for Polar Bears International. If you want to learn more about polar bears, please visit their website. A lot of wonderful resources on there. You go to polarbearsinternational.org. And this is Mike Fitz. Thanks for joining me today. And as we like to say at explore.org, never stop learning. <laughs>